are you staying in the game? You know, we're just going into the NFL playoffs, and, and only the best teams get to the playoffs. You know, the game, the teams that have stayed in the game, they've, they've worked hard, they've persevered, they've, they've made changes so they can be better, more competitive. We're in a series on fresh beginnings, and last week we talked about ways that we can use fresh beginnings to get closer to God. And so today what we want to talk about is how we can stay in the game to get ever closer to God. You know, too often our, our fresh beginnings are like most New Year's resolutions, right? They're, we're we're gung-ho for a few weeks and, and then we fall out of the game. Staying in the game, whatever game that you want to think about, requires special effort. It requires not just work, but we need to work in ways that help us to stay in the game. So let's start out and reflect on these discussion questions. What about your life? Just think about some way in your own life that, that's an example of where you're staying in the game. And then the follow-up question is, well, what approach or what habits or, or how, how, what mechanism do you use so that you do stick with it, that you do stay in the game? So let's, let's just think about those two for just a moment. Well, the goal of staying in the game applies to any of our goals in life, right? Now, our focus today is around the goal of growing closer to God. Jesus, God sent Jesus to be our personal Lord and Savior and our best friend. So growing closer to Jesus helps us grow in that peace and the contentment, that, that feeling of being in the arms of our everla everlasting Lord and Savior to bask in the incredible warmth of God's love. Our goal of growing closer to Jesus does require constant work. We need to keep trying. We need to keep struggling to overcome our human tendencies. We need to work to stay in the game. Now, the Bible is full of examples of what happens when we don't stay in the game. For example, if we go way back in time to when uh, Moses delivered the Hebrews out of slavery in the land of Egypt. Now, that, there, that's a long story, right? And, and you can read about that in Exodus chapters 24 to 32. And it's an interesting story. But the part I want to kind of focus on is, at, at some point, uh, Moses goes up the mountain to talk with God and receive instructions on how the people of God are supposed to live their lives. And that's the when he got the, the tablets containing the Ten Commandments. Well, he was gone long enough that the Hebrew people, they kind of strayed away from God, kind of like in a huge way. They started uh, worshiping false idols and, and, and such as that. And so we hear this story, this part of that story, and. Exodus chapter 32, starting at verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. And then the Lord says to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. And what he meant by that was how, how they tended to stray off so quickly and so often. Well, there's, there's many other examples of God's people meaning well throughout the ages, but then falling away. You know, losing their, their focus on God and in, in, in literally falling out of the game, right? It, but yet there's other examples that people that very much so stayed in the game with God. Now, one example that kind of resonates with me is uh, the story of King David. And King David was, was literally a man after God's heart. And you can read about that. That's, that's some other fairly long reading. But 1 Samuel chapter 13, starting around verse 14. Uh, 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. And you hear about how God looked down and he, he saw David. And David was a man after his own heart. Well, David was anointed king, and so King David loved God and did many, many things to please him. King David was an awesome person. <laughs> but to be honest with you, King David was also a little bit of a stinker. Um, for example, he committed adultery with Bathsheba and then had her husband killed, murdered. 
Um, but yet, through all of that, David repented and asked God to forgive him. And it wasn't just lip service. He honestly meant it. Well, David suffered the consequences of his wrongdoing, but still, God loved him. And he loved him because David was always turning back to God and loving God. And so for me, this is a model for me to follow, right? Not to commit murder or adultery, but, but, but to continue to love God, knowing that God will forgive me and continue to love me and care for me in spite of my shortcomings. And I think in that way, King David is a good example for all of us. Another passage that kind of resonated with me as I was uh, reflecting on, uh, on this message today was comes to us from Matthew chapter 24, starting at verse 10. And these are Jesus' words. He, he says, Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets or false leaders will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. Well, to me, that sounds a lot like what's going on in our current times. People hating each other, turning to violence. And then too often it seems like love, and by that I mean the, the love and concern for others, patience for others, tolerance for others, is growing cold. And so in this passage, Jesus is warning us what can happen if we don't stay in the game in our effort to grow closer to him, to, to get that, um, that reinforcement, that encouragement, and, and that support that we get from him? And so that begs the question, what strategy are you using to stay in the game? Now, last week we talked about the PROP, the P-R-O-P, Pray, Read, Others, Perform method, for growing closer to God. Now those are ways that we can grow closer to God, but they don't necessarily help us stay in the game. They don't help us stay on track. And so then the question is, if you're a Christ follower, what are you doing to grow closer to God? What, what are you doing to stay in the game? Now, we are all called to push forward and strive towards Christian perfection. And Christian perfection is, 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 a, is a phrase that John Wesley used that kind of talks about being a goal of being more Christ-like, being more loving, more patient. Um, now, if you're not a Christ follower, but you're curious about God and Jesus, then we can l l turn that question around a little bit and say, what are you doing to find answers? Because this is an important question. So let's just take a, a, another moment and reflect on these discussion questions. What kinds of things are you doing to grow closer to Jesus or to find answers if you're curious about Jesus? And then the, the follow-up question to that is, well, what kind of things would help you in that, in that search or in that uh, goal? Now, Tom Brady is seen by many to be the greatest quarterback of all time. He certainly is one of the longest serving quarterbacks of all time, and he still seems to be at a top level of performance. And yet, as accomplished as he is, it's well documented that he's continually exploring new ways to succeed at his position. He's constantly embracing change for the purpose of being better as quarterback as leader of his football team. It changes hard and it takes work. Well, as Christ followers, we also need to be constantly exploring new ways to grow closer to Jesus. I just mentioned the prop method. You know, that's pray, read, uh, be around others and perform. Well, that's one way we can grow closer to, or one method we can use to get closer to Jesus. But like I say, that doesn't help us stay in the game. To stay in the game, we need to look at our behaviors. Now, there's many, many uh, self-help articles, um, especially in the, on, just Google it, on how to embrace change in our lives. But I thought I'd, I'd distill it down and, and share with you the Hopper method, right? H, be honest. 
the first step is to be honest with ourselves. What are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? And when we think about our goal, what about ourselves do we need to maybe take a special focus on that, that maybe needs a little more attention than something else? And then, oh, one step. We need to take one step at a time. Identify something that we can achieve that will take us one step closer to our goal and then focus on just that one thing. P for practice. And once we have that next step identified, we need to be intentional, intentional about pushing ourselves to do that one step every day. Now, the prayer challenge is an example of that, right? And so when we talk about the prayer challenge, we say, take five minutes every day at least five minutes or a squeeze in a moment or, or take longer. But the point is to do it every day. Get in that habit so that, that if, when you don't remember to do it, you feel like something's wrong with your day. That's practice. And then the E for evaluate. We need to evaluate ourselves regularly, maybe you know weekly or something like that, to see how we're doing to make sure that we're on track. Because if we start getting off track, then we need to readjust. In that evaluation, we need to be honest with ourselves. You know, maybe we're not doing so good, right? Well, that's okay. We just need to, to see if we can make some adjustments and keep trying to keep working at it. Tom Brady didn't get to be the best quarterback of all time by just jumping out on the football team and say, hey, I'm Tom Brady, I'm the best there is. No, he worked at it. He had setbacks, but he kept working at it. And then the R is for risks. Be willing to take risks. Now change is uncomfortable and it's hard. You know, it, it, it involves uncertainty. And so there are risks associated with doing something that we're not accomplished at. And we, I think we all fear failure, um, but we need to be willing to take those risks and, and, and strive to see if we can't figure out a way to change. And so now for our final discussion question. Are you staying the game? Are you staying in the game? Are you working to stay in the game? Have you thought about staying in the game? Just take a moment and think about what's been said and, and reflect on that for just a moment. I've shared some thoughts about how we can stay in the game growing in relationship with God, how Jesus is just knocking on our door, and how the Hopper Method can help us develop habits that then help us to grow closer to God and stay in the game. What do you think? Growing closer to God does involve change because we have to go from where we are to where we need to be. Change can be hard, and yet we have the most amazing champion to help us in the form of our Lord and Savior Jesus, a best friend who's just knocking on our door. I hope and pray that this message will be hope, helpful for you. If you'd like to get together and talk about any of this, uh, share your thoughts or your doubts, or talk, just talk about God, please reach out. Or if you have a friend, share it with a friend, or have, ask your friend to, to, to reach out to me. I'd love to talk with them. And now for our prayer challenge. Spend that five minutes each day or squeeze in a moment or take longer, but do it every day and think about that one single step that you can take to grow closer to Jesus. And then think about what will help you to achieve that goal. And then ask God for the strength to stay in the game and be successful to grow in relationship with Him. And whatever you do, talk with God often. And yes, try it. You'll like it. Talking with God is the best way to grow in relationship with Him. And friends, feel the awesome power and presence of the Holy Spirit this day as we are forgiven and adopted as God's holy children. Open your heart and feel the warmth and blessings of His love. God gives us that everlasting boost that we sometimes need to get back on track. Amen. And now, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all oh, that... you that loving Lord and Savior and best friend Jesus that you, you sent to us to show us the way to, to help us to feel that, that awesome peace that passes all human understanding. And Lord, in this time, we pray that you reveal the awesome power and presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Companion, so that these words might be transformed, so that 
all who listen or watch this might feel the warmth of your presence. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm really glad that you stopped in and checked us out today, and I do hope and pray that you find something useful in this message, or share it with a friend, or ask that friend to get in touch with me. I'd love to talk with them. You can call or text me at 517-588-8415. My email information is at the end of this message, or you can always use the Calamo Connection card at calamochurch.org forward slash connect dash with dash Calamo. And have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. I'm your neighbor, Jerry, pastor at Calamo Church, and bye for now.